are you a pick me girl? I'm here to help. Hello everyone, I'm Sarah from Everyday Starlet. Welcome to my channel. I make videos to inspire you to be the star of your own life. Today I want to talk about the pick me girl and the pick me girl archetypes. I also have a very exciting announcement. As I mentioned in other videos, I am a recovering pick me girl and I have been working a lot on my recovery, trying to break some of my pick me girl habits over the years. And I'm so excited to announce that I have released the recovering pick me girl guided journal. In this book, I'll go into what a pick me girl is, how to know if you are one. I'll get really in depth into the pick me girl archetypes, which I'm going to touch on in this video, but I go into more depth about how to work on them and heal them. Also like where being a pick me girl can affect you in so many different areas of your life, whether it be your relationships with women, your relationships with men, your relationships with your own body, your personal power, your sexuality. There's over a hundred journal prompts in this book and tons of space where you can, you know, scribble, write, draw, sketch, anything that you want to do to help you work through some of these things and give you some really great practices and ideas to get you started on your recovering pick me girl journey. If you have my dark feminine energy guided journal this book is set up very similarly it goes into much more depth on healing your pick me girl energy from wherever it comes from it'll help you identify some of the areas where you might be a pick me girl some you may already know and some you may not know it's really going to help you deal with some of your issues on healing desperation learning to kind of decenter men in your life and really help you learn to become the best version of yourself. If you're new to my content and you're not familiar with what I mean by a pick me girl, I have some other videos going into this, but in reality, when I talk about a pick me girl, I'm not saying it from a very like judgmental place because I think most of us women at some point in our life have a tendency towards some kind of pick me energy. It's ingrained in our culture for women to seek a man, a relationship, or, you know, just male validation in general. They don't say this in like an accusatory way or a judgmental way. I want women to have awareness around this so we can heal because basically pick me energy is when a woman gets herself into a place where she is so desperate for a man, a relationship, or male validation in general, that she's usually willing to do things that are out of her own character, possibly even compromising herself, who she is as a person, maybe even her health and safety, or the health and safety of other women, just to get that man or get that male validation. And that desperation doesn't work. It's not a good energy to be in. It's not a safe energy to be in. And in reality, it's not gonna get you what you want, which if you are desiring a relationship, I'm assuming you're gonna want a healthy relationship. And being in that desperation, being in that pick me energy is not gonna get you a healthy relationship because at the end of the day, pick me's don't get picked or they don't get picked by quality men because quality men are not gonna be attracted to desperation, okay? In general, none of us are attracted to desperation. We don't want somebody who we feel like is desperate for a relationship or just desperate for validation. We want, we want to be desired. We're not really attracted to people who are just like desperate for a relationship. It tends to feel needy, it tends to feel clingy, it tends to feel very suffocating. So you might be listening to this and might be thinking like, oh yeah, that's me, I've totally been in that I've been desperate for a relationship. You might be thinking that you're not, but I think there's a lot of areas of our life as women, we may actually be operating out of a pick me energy and we don't even know it. And I wanted to create this guided journal for women who feel like they're, you know, like, yes, I'm a pick me girl. I want to heal. I want to be less desperate. I want to learn to become the best version of myself. But I also wrote this book for women who might be feeling like life or relationships or things just aren't going the way that they want and they can't really identify why. And I have a lot of journal prompts and a lot of questions and practices for you to maybe identify those areas of your life where you might be attached to male attention or male validation when you don't even realize it. So yeah, I really hope that you check out this guided journal. I'm just so excited to have it available for you. I also want to make a note that in healing your pick me girl energy, it doesn't mean that you can't have a relationship. It doesn't mean that you can't desire love or even desire male attention because I think honestly for most women, I think those things are normal. It just means that you won't be so desperate for it that you're going to compromise who you are as a person in order to get it. And so, you know, look, if you're not looking for a relationship, you're not looking for love, you're not looking for a man or male attention or anything, then this book is great for you. If you are looking for those things, I actually think this book can help put you in a place where you'll be ready for a healthy relationship when it does come into your life. So I really think this book could be good for anybody, but I do want to get into the different types of pick me girls or the pick me girl archetypes. I go into much more depth in the book explaining them and giving you some journal prompts and stuff to 
help you work through some of these different areas. Some of these archetypes might resonate with you and some of them might not. You might feel like you might be a combination of some or all of them. Most women are probably gonna fall at least a little bit into one of these categories. And all of these pick me girl archetypes are all a wounded or shadow side of a divine feminine archetype or of a dark feminine energy archetype. And I have videos on the divine feminine energy archetypes and the dark feminine energy archetypes. If you want to dive into healing your dark feminine energy archetypes, I do have the dark feminine energy guided journal that you can check out. But yeah, you can also check out my videos where I give you a summary of the other archetypes. If you want to get more in depth into those, and I do dive into the pick me girl archetypes much deeper in my actual guided journal, but I want to touch on the different archetypes here in this video so you can kind of see if any of them kind of resonate with you. So the first pick me girl archetype is the damsel in distress. The damsel in distress is actually like the shadow wounded side of the maiden archetype. Now the maiden archetype in all of us is the part of us that is just very youthful and optimistic and think of it as the Disney princess who's just like loving life and is just keeps that very like youthful wide-eyed innocence which can be beautiful and I think it can be beautiful at any age to embody some of that within us. However when it gets wounded we often outsource our safety to other people. That's when we get into the damsel in distress and the damsel in distress is the woman who is basically helpless without a man. Maybe she intentionally is or she's acting like she is but she's completely helpless when there's a man around. She just cannot figure out how to do anything for herself. For one thing, for most men, that's gonna get exhausting. A lot of guys, while they say that they wanna feel useful and needed, and most men do want that, when they meet a woman who is just completely helpless and can't do anything for herself, he's gonna to start to feel like that's a lot of pressure on him. And for most men, if you are looking for a relationship or you are looking for love or things like that, if you really want like a masculine man, a masculine partner, he's gonna have a passion and purpose in life and that's gonna be a big part of his life and he's not gonna be able to drop everything because you know you need him to open a pickle jar for you some of these pick me girl archetypes I think in small doses aren't terrible like if you know you can open a jar but you want to give it to a guy and let him open it for you or something or you know if you are a woman who has a tendency to do everything for yourself I think sometimes embodying some of this like I'll let him take care of this for me once in a while can be healthy the problem is when it gets to the extreme where you get to a point where you just can't do anything yourself and oftentimes as a woman if you rely too much much on men to do everything for you and you're incapable of functioning on your own oftentimes you end up putting yourself in situations where you may have to compromise your safety just to have a man do things for you and this archetype unfortunately if taken too far can actually put you into some dangerous situations so Again, I'm not implying that you as a woman should feel like you have to do everything yourself or you can never rely on a man. You know, if you do have a man in your life or you have men in your life or something like that and you don't feel like you can rely on them to help you out, you really gotta question why these men are in your life. However, it is still important as a woman to really be able to know that you have your own back and that you can you can function on your own because if you feel like you can't function on your own without a man there, it can lead to you staying in situations that may not be healthy or safe because you don't feel the strength within yourself to be able to get out of them. So again, a little bit of damsel in distress once in a while is not the end of the world, but if you feel like you're sinking into it too deeply where you just cannot survive without a man in your life, it, it leaves you open to being very possibly unsafe if you end up with the wrong man in your life. Next we have the martyr doormat. I actually did a video recently on the like the Cam Newton interview and I would say Cam Newton's like third baby mama Jasmine Brown for sure falls into this martyr doormat. I think a lot of the trad wives do. This is actually the wounded or shadow side of the mother archetype. Now as I mentioned before in other videos, divine mother energy is beautiful. It's lovely to have. Divine mother energy is is the nurturing side, the warmth. I think of it as like, you know, making your family hot soup or a, a warm, like, comforting hug or, you know, just think of it as like the warmth of like a fire by the fireplace or something. Like, that's beautiful divine mother energy. Mothering energy of having to treat grown men like their children and mothering tends to be very masculine energy. It tends to be very micromanaging and controlling energy. But unfortunately, when women start doing that to the point where they are essentially mothering a grown man, they become martyrs, they become, it becomes like how much can I suffer 
for this guy and how much can I do for him to prove my worth. This is kind of like the opposite of the damsel in distress. Whereas the damsel in distress is like, I can't do anything myself. I'm helpless. Please do everything for me. The martyr doormat is the one that's like, no, 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 no. Let me take on everything and never ask for help. Let me never inconvenience a man. I'm not going to ask him to do anything for me because I can take care of my own needs because I, I want to make him feel like he's never burdened by my existence and I want to do everything for him so that he feels completely taken care of and very often as a woman you're you're mothering a grown man like you're making yourself into this sort of doormat of you know loving him unconditionally no matter how bad he treats you you're usually giving so much of yourself that you're ending up drained. And as a woman, it's really important to make sure that if you're in a relationship with a man, women can get drained very easily. The man should always be pouring more into you than you're pouring into him. Think about it sexually, right? The woman is the one who receives, the man is the one who releases and empties. That's basic male-female biology, right? So it's completely unnatural for you as a woman to be giving all the time to a man. When women do that, we end up depleted. When men give to us, our receptivity enlivens them. So men should always be pouring into a woman more than a woman is pouring into him. Women, when we start pouring into a man, we become depleted very easily, become doormats, and we build resentment. These are often the women that will stay married for years. They're miserable. They may or may not have communicated to a man that they're unhappy, but they're the ones that file for divorce and guys are like, it's out of the blue. I have no idea why this is happening. It's because she's completely depleted. She's completely depleted because she's been giving so much and never getting anything back in return. That's the martyr doormat archetype. This is the woman who feels like if she just gives to a man so much and gives all of herself to a man, eventually she'll get something back in return. And men just don't work that way. Men actually start to love you more based on what they pour into you not what you pour into them next we have the object i was going to call it the sex object but i was afraid that that might be a problem with social media algorithms so i'm going to call this the object because this doesn't necessarily have to be sexual but it primarily is sexual this one might be controversial because i feel like there's a big message that women exploiting themselves sexually is liberating i want to make the distinction that when I talk about the object as far as the pick me girl archetype, I'm not talking about a woman who is just uh, in a healthy embodiment of her sexuality. That's what I would call either the, in the light feminine archetype, it would be the lover archetype, which is more about like sensuality. In the dark feminine energy archetype, I call it the sacred slut, which is really more about like a woman's sexuality, but it's connecting to her true sexuality. It's not for male validation. It's for her own deep sexuality. And I'm a huge advocate of women learning to connect to their true feminine sexuality. So I'm not sitting here trying to shame women who are learning to embody their true sexuality. However, the object is actually a woman who is really exploiting her body, herself, her sexuality solely for male pleasure and male validation. Unfortunately, too many women today are convinced that that's liberating, but it's really not because it's not going to be a woman's like true connection to her sexuality. It's really just a woman finding that sexuality in terms of a man and male pleasure. And I think unfortunately with you know, porn culture and everything, I think women are often programmed, as well as men, that sex is supposed to be something that people show up for for male pleasure alone. And the object archetype is actually, I think she can sometimes convince herself she's not a pick-me girl because she can convince herself like, no, I'm being sexual, I'm being liberated, when her sexuality is still focused on male attention and male validation. It's not actually a true deep expression of her own divine sexuality. She's still outsourcing that to other people. And that's where it gets into pick me girl energy. And actually oftentimes a lot of these like Instagram models, the OF models and things like that. I mean, that's kind of what they have to do because they're literally becoming objects for men because that's how they're getting money. So they're objectifying themselves for men. They're not like just truly giving an expression of their own feminine sexuality they're still doing it for like literally for attention or the pleasure of men because that's how they're making money and they're actually kind of turning their sexuality into a a product or a commodity as opposed to like embodying it for you know it's true divine purpose and again this isn't about slut shaming or judging women for connecting to their sexuality or anything like that this is solely about wanting women to be aware of how they're using their sexuality and like are you actually embodying your sexuality for 
you know, whether it be for yourself or a connection with a partner or you just embodying it to please somebody else or to get male attention or male validation or even get money from men or something because those things are ultimately not going to be fulfilling and unfortunately a lot of those women are going to end up with issues. I actually have a video talking about how women using sexuality can be a, like a masculine shield to protect yourself from men and things like that so it breaks my heart that so many women feel like they're doing this and they feel like it's empowering and they feel like it's the antithesis of being a pick me girl when unfortunately turning yourself into an object for male pleasure and male validation is really no different than the woman who turns herself into a trad wife and becomes a a servant for a man you know kind of the martyr doormat so to speak it's never going to feel ultimately fulfilling because you're not embodying your sexuality for yourself you're still doing it for somebody else next i have the cool girl chameleon i think we've all been hearing the term cool girl um there's the monologue in gone girl that got so iconic about the concept of being a cool girl this is kind of like a shapeshifter she just makes herself into whatever she thinks a particular guy or a particular type of guy might want her to be i would say this is like the shadow wounded side of the the wild woman archetype because the wild woman archetype is really about a woman just kind of connecting to her her own individuality her own just like natural instincts and things and the cool girl chameleon is outsourcing all of herself to what other people want her to be i actually think to a certain extent and one of the recommendations i have in my guided journal is to watch legally blonde which is actually the movie that i break down to give you information about the divine feminine archetypes i could do a movie breakdown of legally blonde from a pick me girl perspective if you want to see that because that might be interesting but i do think that that movie actually very much embodies like at the beginning of it kind of the cool girl chameleon in the beginning of the movie Elle woods is like i'm gonna turn myself into a harvard law student just to win this guy over now of course because it's hollywood and because it's a beautiful story she ends up finding herself i really do think that like legally blonde is kind of like the ultimate recovering pick me girl story of like being a, a pick me girl in the beginning and just trying to mold herself into something that she's not to please a man but she ends up finding herself along the way which i think can be a beautiful benefit to being a pick me girl i don't necessarily think everybody should go to quite that extreme and your outcome may not be that nice and neat like hollywood likes to make things but again sometimes along the way of being a pick me girl you can find yourself and i think that can be beautiful thing it's happened to me in certain areas of life but I also think too we have to be aware when we are just conforming ourselves into something we think someone else will want in some cases we can be like trying on different things to see if it fits but I think we have to be really careful if we we get stuck in a box and I think some of these things can be relatively superficial you know if you're like hey I like this guy and he really likes baseball so I'm gonna start learning about baseball well, I mean, if you're really suffering while you're doing it, then that's not a good thing. If you're actually taking time away from really important things in your life just to watch baseball, then that can be a really downfall. But, you know, just learning about baseball just to impress a guy is relatively harmless. You might find that you like watching baseball. You might find that you hate it. You know, those kind of things can be good learning experiences and they're not really that deep. I think, unfortunately, it can get really a lot more extreme when people start conforming to certain religious beliefs that may not feel aligned for them just to win over a guy or even sometimes really pushing themselves into certain political beliefs or things that that really aren't aligning for them just because they're trying to win over a certain type of guy and again this is not about me judging what somebody's religious beliefs should or shouldn't be or their political beliefs should or shouldn't be but unfortunately if you start pushing yourself into some of these things just to win over a, a guy or just to be accepted by a group of men or something like that, you can end up finding yourself in some really bad situations if you're not careful. Honestly, on the most innocent level, you might end up in a relationship probably with somebody who maybe doesn't truly align with your beliefs. That said, I think when you're young sometimes, maybe learning about different religions or learning about different political beliefs and stuff is, you know, hey, it's, it's, I think it's educational. I think it's always important, but I think you have to be really careful that you don't lose yourself in something that really doesn't align for you just to win someone over. So the cool girl chameleon, I mean, again, I do think sometimes, especially when you're young, like kind of trying on different things and different hobbies and different interests and learning more about different ideologies and stuff, it'd be a great thing. I mean, I think we should always be learning. However, 
you have to be really careful that you don't lose yourself and you don't wake up one day and be like, wow, I don't know myself at all because you've only been living for other people's beliefs or interests or things like that. You know, I, th I think there's a lot of women that wake up one day and kind of feel lost and kind of feel like, I don't even know myself because I've been living for other people for so long. And I think that that's a common thing. I know I've, I'm kind of healing from that. I probably am the cool girl chameleon more than anything, but yeah. You can feel like you've wasted a lot of time. You may even walk away from it with some things that you enjoy and that you were glad you got to know, but you also might wake up one day and be like, wow, I wasted a lot of time on other people and didn't actually pay attention to myself and my own needs and I've been sort of outsourcing all my decisions and interests and things to other people. I, I'm, I'm willing to bet most women have probably gone through a cool girl chameleon phase at some point in their life. This one might be a little uh, controversial. This one I call the toxic tomboy. Now, I want to be very clear. I'm not insulting tomboys, okay? I think if you're, you know, a, a woman who has very sort of like male interests or you like to be more casual or something like that, like I'm not knocking that at all, okay? If you find yourself to be more of a tomboy, cool. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being a tomboy. I call it the toxic tomboy because I feel like this is the woman who feels like she needs to defend men and masculinity and wants to fight for men to be masculine but yet she wants to fight from a very masculine place herself kind of like she feels like she needs to be the warrior to protect men but her argument is is that men should be the leaders and don't need protecting they should be the protectors i have a video talking about the hypocrisy of the masculine pick me girl that dives into this deeper this would be your your pearl okay i would say i think even like a candace owens kind of fits into this category where they're very very masculine in presentation i would say this is kind of the wound side of the like the huntress archetype the huntress archetype is actually the most masculine of all the feminine archetypes and it's healthy to have that it's healthy to have that, that drive to fight for what you believe in so the huntress archetype is beautiful but when it starts to turn toxic and it starts to become this I want to destroy any woman who does not step aside and let men be masculine when it's like, well, wait a second, you're fighting harder to protect the masculine men than the mas than the masculine men are protecting themselves. Like this is the type of woman that will make a whole career out of shaming women for having a career and not prioritizing family, but yet they have a career and it's based on shaming women for having careers. This is the type of woman that will just take any opportunity to hate on women. They'll feed into men's victimhood mentality. They will just trash women so that they can prove they're not like the other girls, but yet they want women to embrace their femininity. But of course, in their mind, femininity is like the martyr doormat, but they're not gonna become the martyr doormat because they're the protectors, but yet they think men should be the protectors, but yet they're also feeding into the narrative that women don't deserve protecting because they wanna shame all modern women. And I have to say, I think the toxic tomboy is probably the most extreme of all of the pick me girl archetypes and I hope healing for everybody, but I do think that the toxic tomboy might be the one that might have the most resistance to healing because they're gonna be the most guarded. And unfortunately, a lot of them are making a lot of money on this kind of like pandering to men content. I actually think you can usually spot a toxic tomboy archetype by the number of men in her comment sections that are like protect this woman at all costs and like that woman and i would always look at women like that and look in the comment sections at the type of men that are praising her and if these are the type of men that you wouldn't want to have anything to do with please don't take her advice please don't listen to her because the types of men, like the types of men that are pandering to like a pearl are not the types of men that you would want in your life anyway, right? Okay, next we have the bimbo dits. I actually think that this kind of archetype is actually gonna come back on trend because I feel like the like early 2000s Paris Hilton ditzy girl aesthetic is gonna start coming back. And don't get me wrong, like I love the pink and the sparkle. I'm not knocking the aesthetic or anything like that. I mean, clearly I'm a bleach blonde, so I'm not sitting here and trying to act like I look like some kind of a rocket scientist or anything like that. However, I do think it's important for women to be careful not to diminish their intelligence, downplay their intelligence, or simply deprioritize education in their life just to accommodate men or to not, not make men feel too intimidated. I will admit, 
as somebody like my acting background i i love the dumb blonde aesthetic so i used to play the dumb blonde character in a lot of you know acting roles that i used to do like in the theater and things like that and even like back when i was a stand-up comic my comedy act was sort of ditzy and things like that or whatever so you know i i had a tendency to kind of play into that a lot the bimbo ditz is actually what i would say the wounded or shadow side of the wise woman and actually in divine feminine archetypes the wise woman is actually more of the it's less about necessarily education and it's a little bit more about like divine wisdom our intuition because as women we hold so much wisdom within us sort of like traditional education tends to be more of a masculine mindset is the masculine is the mind the feminine is the body so the wise woman archetype is really more of like wisdom in the body and the the masculine would be more of like the wisdom of the mind I think it's important for everybody to have both I think everyone should have a connection to both but unfortunately the the bimbo ditz archetype will typically shut herself off from either of those things and it's similar to the damsel in distress archetype where she kind of like feels a need to outsource everything in this particular case, in the Bimbo Ditz case, everything intellectually to men because if she shows how intelligent she is, she thinks that men are gonna feel intimidated or not gonna be as interested in her. And again, like I'm not against the sort of like Bimbo Ditz aesthetic, so to speak. I just think it's important that women also have a an intelligence within them. I think it's it's really important. I think education for women is important. I think not even just like traditional education, but I think also like learning to connect your inner wisdom as a woman is super important. And I can tell you from my own experience, and I've had to learn this lesson before, if you as a woman feel like you have to diminish your intelligence for a guy or for a relationship, you'll only be able to sustain that for so long. Eventually that's gonna get exhausting and you're never gonna be able to respect him. You can try to pretend like you're respecting him, but if you are actually smarter than a man, you're never really gonna be able to fully respect him because you're always gonna secretly know that you're smarter than he is. And if you have to diminish that intelligence, you're not gonna be able to fully show up and respect him. Men are gonna feel that on some level because men deeply desire respect. Now, I do believe men should have to earn that respect, but if you're never gonna be able to fully show up and respect a man, you're never gonna be able to give him what he truly needs. And you're always gonna be feeling like you're holding yourself back. So I always advise women to never get into a relationship with a guy if you can't fully show up as the most intelligent version of yourself because I've had to learn that lesson the hard way unfortunately now that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have the same level of intelligence in every area like some people are really great at numbers and mathematics and things like that and some people are just really better at like words and, and things like that and whatever and I think if you have two people who maybe are both intelligent but your strengths are in different areas and that can be really great you can balance each other out as long as you both respect each other in your areas of expertise and you're not feeling like the other person's strength is diminishing your strength it can be an ego thing for either people i think men especially have that an ego issue with that i think if you are with a man who has a serious ego issue with your intelligence in any area i think it probably is going to be an issue long term and i just think women need to be aware of that so when i talk about the bimbo dits it really has more to do with you just showing up as your most intelligent self and if a man is intimidated by that you know he's just not the man for you finally we have what I call the obsessive bride. This is becoming more and more relevant on social media. I'm seeing this a lot more. It tends to be the woman who is obsessed with marriage. This is what I would call the wounded or shadow side of the queen archetype. Now the queen archetype in divine feminine energy, she has a regalness, she has a feminine leadership to her, but she very often feels her queen-like energy the most when she's connected to a king. He has to truly be a king. Unfortunately, nowadays, it's harder for women to truly step into that queen energy with a true king because there's a lot of factors as to why men are not stepping into their king energy. I'm not gonna dive into that in this video, but as a woman, you should be able to step into your divine feminine queen with or without a king. And actually, I would say like the dark feminine archetype of the dark queen is actually much more about that queen energy and sovereignty. But you should be able to step into that queen energy with or without a king in your life. Life. but the light feminine queen tends to be more herself if she is she has a king next to her the obsessive bride in the pick me archetype is really she wants marriage 
maybe it's just a wedding or maybe it's a wedding and marriage or maybe it's just marriage and she wants that no matter what like that's her focus that's her laser focus and she will ignore any other signs any other warning signs she will ignore everything else just to get that wedding or to get that ring or to get that marriage to get that title of wife and she'll often put herself on a shelf now she may show up as the like serial marrier like that just keeps getting married and seems to always jump from relationship to relationship j-lo she may also be the like long-term girlfriend that just will stay with a guy forever just to like in hopes it'll give her a ring i have a video talking about the big sean janae aiko relationship and getting into kind of like long-term girlfriends and shut up rings and things like that this is oftentimes the woman who will stay with a guy for 10 years and just be constantly trying to get him to marry her because she feels like she's invested so much time in him she's so blinded by the idea of getting the title wife she's ignoring the fact that you know maybe this isn't even the guy that she wants the relationship with she's just invested so much time in him so this is the woman that will sometimes badger a guy into the shut up ring these are oftentimes the women that end up with the <laughs> horrific wedding vows you see online or the men that will just like smash cake in a woman's face because the man actually didn't really want to be married to her he doesn't really even want to be with her he doesn't even really like her but she's just latched onto him because she's so desperate for marriage so again this can show up in a few different extremes you know as a woman desiring a relationship desiring marriage and desiring a commitment is normal like i mean and if you don't want that that's fine but if you do want that that's perfectly acceptable However, if you are willing to put up with anything or deal with anything just to get the ring or just to get the wedding or just to get the marriage and you don't actually look at the person and the qualities you want in a partner and you don't actually look at the, the big picture and you're so laser focused on the, the goal of the title of wife, you can get yourself into some really messed up situations. And I think this obsessive bride archetype can be really dangerous because you see a lot of miserable women in this situation and unfortunately a lot of them become parents and this type of a situation is usually not great for raising children because you usually are raising children in a really bad relationship because you ignored the warning signs because you've been so laser focused on like being a wife so those were the pick me girl archetypes and if you saw yourself in any of these archetypes maybe even several i know i've i've been some of them in the past had to work through a lot of them and you know some of them i've never really identified with but yeah if you saw any of yourself in any of these archetypes i highly recommend that you check out my recovering pick me girl guided journal it again there's so many journal prompts there's some practices and I go into you know some tips on how to heal from each of these archetypes some journal prompts to help you kind of work through some of these archetypes and I also have so many chapters and journal prompts and practices to help you heal your pick me girl energy in so many areas of your life your relationships with women your relationships with men working on your inner child stuff your personal power your body image your sexuality and just learning to connect with yourself again because it's my belief when you heal your desperation for a man a relationship male attention and you actually start to like decenter men in your life and you start to center yourself you start to heal yourself and really just fall in love with yourself and actually figure out who you are and what you truly want you're going to be a healthier happier person and if you do still desire to be in a relationship which many of us will you'll just be in a better place to find someone who truly aligns with you and not just settle for just somebody who's there you know you can actually find a partnership with somebody who is actually going to be a good match for you or you'll just be you know a happy more fulfilled person on your own if that's what you choose to do because you know while i do think that most women are going to want relationship and connection not everybody is going to want that in you know a, a, a relationship with a man you know, or marriage or something like that this will also help you work on your own self-esteem which can help you in every area of your life it'll also help you in your relationships with women so you can have better friendships and it will help you work on some of your inner child stuff which we all need work on so yeah i highly recommend you check out this guided journal i was so so excited to get this ready to share with you because i just think it's going to help so many people and i'm just so excited to hear your breakthroughs if you do get the book let me know and if you have 
have any breakthroughs or anything, let me know. And be sure you leave a review on Amazon if you really love the book and enjoy it because that really does like boost the book on Amazon. So more people can find the book, more people can get healing. Actually the same with this video. If you do enjoy this video, this content, please like, subscribe, engage with the content, leave a comment because it just boosts it in the algorithm so that more people can find this content. And I just really want to help as many people, particularly women as possible to just heal their pick me girl energy and just become the best versions of themselves. If you have any thoughts on this video, questions, comments, video requests, anything like that, let me know. Leave a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you and I love your suggestions. Details about the book, the link, how to get it will be in the description box below along with, you know, links to my Dark Feminine Energy Guided Journal, my courses, masterclasses, and all my social media links. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you join me next time.